Now that I'm converting this go-kart to electric, I'm gonna to need to select a battery that's appropriate for the application. As you can see, they come in a pretty large variety of sizes and there are many different types, but for our purposes, we're gonna classify them into two different groups. There is the deep cycle battery, which would be these three guys over here, and then starting batteries, which would be these three over here. The first thing I wanna point out is you can't tell just by looking at the size of the battery, whether it's a deep cycle battery or a starting battery. It has to do with the anatomy on the inside. Starting batteries have much thinner plates, which allows them to pump out current very quickly, but the plates also erode very quickly. And so they're not designed to deliver current for very long. That's why they're great in a car, which needs a lot of power for just a few seconds. And then it's immediately being recharged once the car is running. Whereas a deep cycle battery like these guys can't deliver as much current as these because the plates are thicker, there's less surface area, but they can pump out electricity for a much longer period of time and the plates don't erode quite as fast. Now, there is some battery terminology which I want to define for you. One of the first ones I wanna to talk to you about is this group size. So here we have a battery which was removed from a car and you can see it has a group size of 58. The group size of the battery is only an indication of its general shape. That is the dimensions of the battery and the terminal types, which you see here on the top. So if you find that you need to replace the battery in your car, for example, you wanna make sure that you get the right group size so it'll fit back in the same block and have the same type of terminals as the battery you just removed. That doesn't necessarily tell you how much power the battery can put out or how long the battery will last. Which leads me to number two, this CCA, which is, stands for coal crank amps. Now in general, uh, batteries that are coal don't put out as much power as a battery that's warm. And so the battery industry has come up with this coal crank amp, which is a standard. And it defines essentially how much current the battery can produce for 30 seconds when the temperature is zero degrees Fahrenheit. Now, uh, that just helps to compare one battery to the other when you're talking about starting a car and the temperature is very cold. In warm weather, it doesn't really make a difference. But as you can see, this one has 550 cold crank amps. This guy right here, which is just came off of the goat cart that I am uh, converting to electric. As you can see right here, the cold crank amps is 120 amps. And this would be, this does make sense because the anatomy of this guy is a lot smaller, so there won't be nearly as much surface area as you have in this guy to produce electricity. Now this massive guy is also a starting battery. This is the type of battery you might find in a tractor trailer and the cold crank amps are 700 in this case. Now there's another term being defined here and that's 190 is the reserve capacity. Reserve capacity is another term that has been defined and it basically says that this battery can deliver 25 amps for 190 minutes uh, without falling below a minimum voltage that has been set uh, or agreed upon by the battery industry. And that's that 190 amps. You would only have that situation if your alternator wasn't working properly and therefore the battery was supplying all the power for your car while you drive down the road. So here we have a battery which I took out of one of those um, Power Wheels cars, like the little kids cars, you know, kids track. And you can see it's got a number indicated on the front here. The 12V is, I think, pretty obvious, it's 12 volts, but the 12AH may be new to you, and it essentially means amp hours. What that's supposed to tell you is that this guy can put out 12 amps for one hour, but it could also mean this guy can put out one amp for 12 hours, or two amps for six hours, and so on. But the idea is that this just gives you a relative scale. Now, if you have an application like mine where you need a lot of current 
for a short period of time. For me, I'm looking for about a 30 to 40 minute ride, and I need to be able to put out anywhere from 60 to 120 amps uh, during that time period. So I'd want to know what uh, exactly how long the test was. Most of the time, the standard is 20 hours, but that's not always the case. Uh, sometimes they will be tested based on the intended application of the battery. So that's something you want to look into. Uh, it's important because if you're on the higher end of this, say I really want to get 12 amps for one hour, but it was tested for 20 hours, it's very unlikely I'm actually going to get the full 12 amps for an hour. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this video to get into why that's the case, but essentially the more current you try to pull from the battery, the lower the total capacity of the battery. One of the things that I want to point out is if you have a battery that has cold crank amps on it and you don't see an amp hour rating, then you are definitely looking at a starter battery and that is not the right kind of battery to use in this application. The reason is the, because the plates are so thin, if you deeply discharge a starter battery, you are slowly doing damage to the inside of the battery. And if you can recharge it, you won't, it won't last for very many cycles going through that kind of abuse because it's just not designed to do that. So starter battery would not be a good choice for a goat card application. But neither would a battery like this. 4.5 amp hours, it's clearly way too small. It's just not gonna produce enough power for very long. So here I have a battery which I know is dead. I've got a 12 volt charger right here. I'm gonna hook this guy up. If you hook them up backwards, most chargers will just deny it. It won't give you a problem, but you do wanna be careful. Try to, um, just in case, hook them up the right way. So my black is on the negative, red's on the positive. I'm gonna turn on the charging. So through the magic of editing, I have waited about a minute or so to make sure it wasn't gonna switch over to bad battery, but it seems to be actually trying to charge the battery. But I already know that this battery won't take a good charge, so I'm going to stop this and show you a better way to test your battery. So, so this right here is a battery tester. It will actually test the battery under load and it will put a sizable load on it. In this case, it's going to try to draw 100 amps from this battery. So I'll do the same thing. I'll put the terminals on. And as you can see, uh, hopefully you can see that really well, it's actually reading up uh, pretty close to the 13 volt mark. But if I try to draw a load, it goes all the way over to bad battery. And I'm still drawing a load, still drawing a load. But there you go. So you can see the battery is actually dead. It's no good. These don't cost very much and it's really good to have something like this on hand if you want a little bit more accurate way to measure whether your battery is good or not. As you can see, we've made some progress here. I've got a couple more terms for you and I thought I'd go ahead and give you a quick update while I'm thinking about it. As you can see, we've got some new shoes. So she's rolling around pretty good. I have tried to order a seat for this guy, but apparently they don't make it anymore. So I can't even find a used one. So I ended up buying one of those generic seats and I'm gonna stick that in there and modified, make sure it's secure. Cause that's really what this is all about, having fun with the kids. I don't particularly want to go kart for myself. Right up here in this tray is where I intend to strap down my batteries. And so four should fit here just fine. It'll give me 48 volts. And I'm thinking about putting an extra one down here at the bottom so that I can experiment with 60 volts as well. Cause I don't want the batteries to be up front, but they will be strapped down pretty good right here. Uh, let me show you the batteries real quick. These are 100 amp hour deep cycle batteries. They're lead acid. And these are the batteries that I've chosen for this particular project. There are many different options. I chose these guys because they fit my price range and the power delivery parameters that I need. But there's gel batteries, there's lithium batteries, which are lighter. Of course, they're more expensive. Uh, they can be discharged more deeply, which actually brings me to the final term I want to tell you about which is DOD or depth of charge. And that's a term used to describe how deeply the battery has been discharged. So if you say a 25% DOD, then you've used 25% of the battery's capacity 
and there's 75% remaining. My plan is to discharge these guys to 50% and then charge them back up. So there's much more that could be said about uh, using a lithium battery versus a gel battery versus lead acid and all of that, but that's kind of outside of the scope of what I wanted to talk about in this video. I primarily wanted to focus on the, what I consider to be the essentials. And then you guys can uh, do your homework and figure out what other parameters work best for your application. And the final update for you is the speed controller is here. So you can see there is my foot pedal, my speed controller, and hopefully uh, by next weekend, I will have had a chance to wire this guy up and make sure everything works properly. As always, if I've made any technical errors, I will add notes to the description. So be sure to check that so that you leave this video with the correct information. Thanks for watching.